Hi everybody, welcome into Beyond the Briefing. I'm JP Dice, meteorologist, airline transport pilot, and flight instructor. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about weather and how it impacts flying. One of the more popular videos that uh, we had on this channel was the Skew T video. Kind of surprised me that that many folks were interested in learning about Skew Ts and uh, trying to figure out the weather by looking at those Skew Ts figuring out cloud heights, where they're going to be in IMC, freezing levels and winds. It's a really handy piece of information uh, that you can derive from those forecast models. And there's actually several types of skew tees. You have the skew tees that come from the weather balloons, and you also have what we call the virtual soundings that come from the forecast models. So let's take a look and talk a little bit about these skew tee charts. And I think I have a better way to explain uh, how they work and how you can better utilize them. One of my favorite Favorite sites, we've talked about this, pivotalweather.com. A lot of different forecast models there. You've got the GFS, which goes out uh, a longer range. You have the European. Uh, the one that I am selected on right now is called the NAM, the North American model. And I am looking at the NAM for uh, this uh, Sunday morning. So that's 12Z. If uh, you are in the Birmingham area, that is going to be at 6 a.m. Of course, the Z time, that is an offset from Greenwich uh, Mean Time, GMT, or Zulu time. So we're looking at early in the morning on Sunday. And I want to just kind of click around a little bit here and show you a skew T. On, on the pivotal weather maps, which are really cool, you can, you can pick anywhere. I'm going to pick my home county right here, Polk County, Florida. And... There's a skew T chart. And I know if you are not used to looking at these, it's like, oh my gosh, what kind of mess has he gotten me into here? What does this mean? Well, what you're looking at, and I'm going to draw on here so it's going to make it a little bit easier to understand, hopefully. Um, over here on the right hand side, you see all of this? Those are your winds. And those are wind barbs, okay? You can see the wind is out of the east, down low, and then it becomes more southerly right through here. So we're looking vertically into the atmosphere. Now over on the left-hand side, those are your altitudes. And wouldn't it be nice if they were actually in feet, but they're not. They are in millibars. So right here, 850 millibar, that's around 5,000 feet. 500 millibar, that's around 18,000 feet right through there. So 700 is going to be around 9,000 feet. So those are just some quick references. That's generally pretty close to those altitudes. And you have a red line, and you also have the green line. The red line represents the air temperature. What is the air temperature doing the farther you go up in the atmosphere, the higher you go in the atmosphere. Well, it's decreasing in most cases. There are some inversion layers, and, and you can see that here on the skew tees when those happen. The green line, that is actually the dew point temperature. That is the temperature in which, when you reach that, you're going to have condensation. When the air temperature and the dew point meet, what happens? You have a cloud develop. Or if it's down at the ground, you're going to be looking at a foggy type situation, low visibility. So let's go back into the data again and show you what's going on. So where are we going to have, say, a cloud layer with this? Well, let's just go right to it. Right through here, this is going to be at 500 millibars all the way down to around, it looks like that's around 600 millibars. So that's going to be somewhere you're going to start running into IMC between 18,000 feet and all the way down to about 10,000 feet. This is going to be IMC. Now the freezing line, and again this is in central Florida, there's our freezing line. So if you're up here at, say, 15, 16,000 feet, that's going to be an ice layer right through there. So you're going to be looking at uh, temperatures below zero, below zero Celsius, and you're going to be in IMC, visible moisture. So right through there, where I've marked kind of that box, that is where you're going to be looking at uh, icing conditions starting to form right through there. So we'll go back and we'll go up a little bit higher 
and let's clear some of this off. So what happens higher up in the atmosphere? So let's say you were in a, a jet aircraft or a turboprop and you're going to be cruising up here uh, 30,000 feet up through here. Notice how the uh, dew point and the air temperature line, they really start moving farther apart. So what's happening there? You have drier air aloft. When you have drier air, and that's, that's the way it works, the higher in the atmosphere you go, the drier the air, you have less moisture up there. That's why we typically don't see anything except uh, cirrus clouds when we're up at 35, 40,000 feet. So that's what's going on there. The dew point and the air temperature are separating the higher you go up in the atmosphere. So this is from a, a point location uh, around Polk County, Florida. As far as the weather on this particular day, not a lot of instability. May have, this is uh, early in the morning, so you may have some low visibility. And the reason I'm saying that, look right here. See that little area, temperature and the dew point close together? You've got the air temperature at 73 and the dew point is coming in at 70 degrees. So when those numbers, as we've, we've learned as pilots, when those numbers are close together, that's when we actually have uh, low visibility or you have rain. In this case, it's the most likely low visibility. So that's how you look at a skew T chart. So how would you use this in practical application? Uh, say, for instance, uh, that you are planning a trip. It's three days from now. Uh, you go out and you find uh, one of the higher resolution models that is going to be able to give you as much data as possible. And you pick these locations along your route. So if you're going from Birmingham down to Gainesville, Florida, for instance, you would have Birmingham and then you would have probably somewhere around Eufaula, Alabama, and then uh, maybe Valdosta, Georgia, then on down toward uh, Gainesville, maybe Cross City, something like that. And you would look at these skew T's for all of these locations and that would give you a good cross section of the atmosphere and uh, an idea of what the winds are going to be, where you're going to be looking at visibility issues, where you're going to be looking at the cloud bases, the cloud tops. You can figure all of that out by looking at the skew T. Let's take another example here. I'm going to clear some of this off and let's try to figure out where the clouds begin and you're going to break out. So let's look down here into, and again, we're looking off the NAM, the North American model. This is one of the higher res or the mesoscale models that we're looking at. And we'll go down into uh, South Florida around Palm Beach County here and we'll pick up. There you go. That is a skew T for that area at again, 12 Z. And what I'm going to show you here is, where would I break out of the clouds? Well, it looks like to me, if you're flying your Bonanza or your Mooney or Cessna 172, you're probably not going to break out of the clouds. But if you have um, a Lear 60 <laughs> or, you know, a Citation, you have a nice uh, corporate jet or something, uh, you're going to break out of the clouds. So you're going to start cloudy right here at the bottom. And it's going to be cloudy all the way up to about 400 millibars or so. And then you're going to be on top of that. So in terms of an altitude that you're looking at there, that's going to be uh, around 27, 28,000 feet. You're going to be on top of the clouds. And uh, once you're on top, you're going to be completely out of it all the way up. If you could get into, you know, flight level four uh, zero or four five zero, you're going to be completely out of it in the in in beautiful sky. But it's going to be all the way down from about 25, 27,000 feet down to the surface. You're going to be dealing with cloudy skies. So that's what it is telling me there by looking at the skew T chart. Isn't that handy information? Just by looking at these point locations. Remember, these are points in time. So if you do have a long trip, what you're going to be looking at is, remember, if you're leaving at 12Z in Birmingham, it's going to take you an hour or two to get to, say, Gainesville, depending on what you're in, probably two and a half hours for most single engine aircraft. Uh, you go ahead and click on Gainesville and the location there. Uh, if you're leaving at 12Z, so add about two and a half, three hours to it to see what the weather's like when you're going to arrive. Now, remember, these are forecast models. This is not 
set in stone by any stretch of the imagination, but the higher res models do give you a pretty good idea on what's going to happen. This is really the basis of what the weather service uses when they're putting together their tasks. You combine the model data, high resolution data, and also your experience as a meteorologist or even, you know, if somebody's been flying airplanes for a long time, you know after you've had a bunch of heavy rain and you have uh, rain uh, soaked ground, probably the next day you're going to have low clouds or a low visibility. Hopefully, this has helped you get a better handle on how to use these SKU-Ts. Again, PivotalWeather.com is a great source for that information. You run the gamut there of forecast models, anything from the European to the GFS, which is a longer range, to the North American, to the HRRR. That's the High Resolution Rapid Refresh Model. You've got the wrap in there. Lots of information at your disposal. It's what we use in the TV forecasting business to uh, come up with the weather. It's what you can use as a pilot to help you in your flight planning. I hope you have enjoyed this edition of the on the briefing. I told you I would go back and we'd talk a little bit more about skew tees and how to better use those in making our flight plans. As always, I love hearing your questions, your comments, and don't forget, if you like this channel, subscribe. I'll see you later. JP here.